Okay, so here's the three choices, and uh, be well aware that the models very much matter. There's a number of different models under these manufacturers, so just be cautious and just pay attention to what you're looking at when you read reviews especially. Um, we have the Deeper 3.0 Smart Fish Finder, a little bit different than some of the other Deepers. We have the Fish Hunter Pro. This is not the 3D. The 3D is much more expensive and much newer. Um, this is price compatible. And we have the most affordable of the group, the iBobber. Which the Deeper has real slick packaging, even has a sticker of authenticity, and it gives you what's inside of it. A USB, a pouch, and some bolts. Not a lot. It's mostly just the unit. Very simple, very pretty. you got a pouch here, some bolts. You've got the unit itself with different ways to attach it. You can cast it from shore. You can attach it to a boat. You can launch it off a bridge. Um, it's this big. It fits in my hand. It's pretty cool. It's pretty small. Real simple. It unscrews to get to the charging unit. Um, you'll see there's a silicone seal that keeps the water out of the electronics. And there is the... USB charging port. Alright, next up we have the iBobber. Um, not much to this package at all. You've got your little bobber, a little bit smaller. Um, you can see the deeper fits on top of it, just about. Um, and the charging station, which is like so. Very simple. Next up we have the Fish Hunter Pro model. Um, this one comes with all kinds of goodies and is by far the largest of the three um, being tested. Just to kind of contrast, there's the deeper. It could um, very easily consume about two of those. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's packaged with all kinds of goodies though. It's got a cigarette charger. Um, it's got a regular wall charger. But one thing I do know that is not my favorite thing to see is it's got a non-standard charger so if you don't have this cord you're out of luck if you're on the field um, in the water wherever you might need be you are not going to be plugging that into your standard micro so that gives me a uh, pause comes with a pouch waterproof pouch you probably know how well that'll work comes with some cheap rope um, that you know is what it is but this is a big this is a big unit. It's as big as my hand at least, if not bigger. So this is my favorite, the Deeper. It's got a simple USB micro plug. You plug it in, it's super secure, it falls down, you're not going to lose anything. Um, the next up is the proprietary, the Fish Hunter. Um, it has a nice orange light on it to let you know it's charging. And the Deeper, I forgot to mention, has a little blinking light to let you know it's charging. Um, the one that's the most interesting and the most cool, perhaps, is the eye bobber. Lights blue, sits in a cradle, and one thing that it does is it pops in and out. And just to clarify, the only one with a true universal uh, plug is the Deeper. It has a micro USB. You can use it with any charging cable you can find. The iBobber has a proprietary cradle. I didn't quite point that out earlier. And the Fish Hunter has a proprietary cord. Just a few quick things about the Fish Hunter Pro, a few specs. Um, it does have an ice fishing flasher up on top, which is nice, not all do. Um, it does work both as a line fed, thrown, cast it out toy, as well as a trolling toy. You can troll this up to two miles an hour behind your boat or kayak. Not very fast, not very useful, but you can do it. So let's talk specs on the Deeper. This is a Bluetooth device. It's my least favorite type of data transmission. It tends to be unreliable. It tends to drop signal. It tends to just be a pain in the butt, but we'll see how that works. Um, one hugely important thing is it doesn't penetrate water. That would be the Bluetooth. So this will not work if submerged. So keep that in mind. That's a big deal that could be a deal killer a few specs on the eye bobber um, it is Bluetooth that again is not my favorite way to connect it's Bluetooth 4.0 um, it's not the most reliable technology in the world though it works we'll see when it happens um, this is 59 millimeters in size and it is 1.7 ounce it is light lighter than the rest um, comes with a nice little instruction manual not, not a lot of beef to it but some troubleshooting so here we are all packed up ready to go in their nicely branded little cases here um, the deeper is a clear winner fish hunters kind of large and the eye bobbers just cheap um, my hands there for perspective so for my testing I came out to the uh, Odeon Point area of Rye, New Hampshire um, in a very busy channel 
I wanted lots of chop. I wanted to really know if fish were moving through here. So this um, was going to become very important to me to know my depths and to know what was going on. Um, so far it's not spotting a lot of fish, but it is keeping a nice eye on the depth of the water. Um, so. Okay, so here's the deeper. Um, and it was pretty easy to figure out. I've got it on a leash. Go around the back of the kayak. Busy area. So right here we have our first fish. This was actually spotted on the eye bobber, which is sitting right there. Um, made a few casts with my fly and got a nice fish. Really. Bye, buddy. So I actually did get a screen grab of the eye bobber screen before I caught that fish. Um, it obviously found some sort of school, whether it was bait fish being chased by um, some bigger fish or what. All I know is I saw a monitor tell me there were fish below me. I cast, I really quickly retrieved, and bam, there was that schooly striper. So I guess in retrospect, uh, the fact that I got one fish I probably wouldn't have gotten. Um, I know where they were, but I didn't know when exactly to strike. Um, so I'm going to give that a big bonus point for helping me catch that fish. These fish finders do serve in some capacity and add to your arsenal of tricks, um, though they don't necessarily help you catch tons more fish. I caught four additional fish um, that weren't spotted on the, any of the markers, so the fish are there, but it did help me to figure out where they weren't and where they might be. Um, so I definitely think these are nice to have, especially on a kayak, especially in a big area like open surf or choppy waters. So when all is said and done, they all work pretty well. Um, I had a big problem with disconnects with all three devices. Um, the iBobber would be my top choice for one reason and one reason alone. It may disconnect and a little red indicator will tell you it's disconnected, but it does not force you to reboot, um, to turn Bluetooth off and on, to reset, to turn your phone off and on, as uh, I had a lot of problems with the Fish Hunter and I had a lot more problems with the Deeper. The Deeper I probably only got to work two or three times. Um, it was extremely frustrating to get going once it was disconnected it would reconnect but the software would not um, recognize that it was reconnected so it, uh, let's just say it was it was kind of bad um, fish finder uh, connectivity is never going to be beautiful but what happened was once you got waves or water or any kind of um, additional motion these puppies would disconnect and that's a big deal and it's going to happen and you know it's going to happen so the solution I learned was to take them out of the water anytime it's going to chop or you're going to move more than a snail's crawl two miles an hour whatever that is um, and it did alleviate a lot of the problems but it kind of defeats the purpose of having a fish finder on a kayak if you can only use it when you're stationary. Um, a big issue for me. But the iBobber was by far the easiest to use, the most simple to use, recovered the quickest, and it gave the least amount of headaches. Um, it did not have the most fascinating viewfinder. It did not have the best graph data. It did not do the best in terms of finding weeds. However, simplicity on the water is everything. So um, as of this point, I'm going to choose that. I'm going to take these out for another day of testing. But the iBobber is the win um, followed by the fish hunter which has a great sonar a really smart sonar um, really sees everything which is kind of what you want but uh, two or three times I had to put it away because I just could not get it to reconnect um, and I'll show you some of these screenshots it's interesting stuff but huge problem when you're sitting there fish are busting in your sonar won't connect uh, so I spend more time fishing with my phone than I do my um, fishing rod I'm going to go out today with a casting rod and see how that works. So here's a pretty good example of a spot where I marked a fish. Um, a couple fish actually. I did get a hit, uh, which gave me an idea that there could be fish out and about. So uh, I got the old eye bobber in, um, and it did mark a couple fish. So they're here, and I'm about to hit a boat. So unfortunately with the fish hunter, I did see this quite a bit. I think more times than not, it occurred when the uh, item was submerged in the water or I went too fast on the kayak. Um, it is a little bit sensitive and there is a fix. You have to go turn off your Wi-Fi, turn it back on, reconnect to the fish finder and reopen the software and it almost always starts to work again. But this probably happened a dozen times 
in a one trip, it's it's a pain. There's no doubt about it. But uh, superior to the deeper, which I could only get going working once, and the eye bobber seems to work really well most all the time. Except one thing I noticed about it is it marks fish where I don't believe they are. Um, it marked plenty of fish, and I would watch below the surface of the water and see nothing. So a um, little bit skeptical about that, and the fish hunter seemed to not mark any fish today. So perhaps there weren't any fish to mark. Uh, you know, you never know, um, but that's an important piece of this. So here's what I decided to do the casting portion of uh, my testing. I've got a rather diverse section of rocks, water, weeds, um, in different bottoms to contend with. So this is really a challenging spot. Uh, most of it's more than four feet. It's not all that deep, so let's see how they do. And this is the fish hunter's um, retrieve from uh, deep to shallow. And then in fish view, which is the simplified view, um, the same thing. Looks great. This is the eye bobber's view. Um, obviously not as sophisticated, but it still gets the point across. And on the uh, secondary piece is the simplified view for the eye bobber, um, deep to shallow. And now we have the deeper. I actually got it to work. You can see this one's pretty funky because it really uh, gets a lot of depth. It gets the weeds in there. Um, it spots a couple fish, but I'm pretty sure that was swell as it struck. Now, what happened with the deeper is, um, as usual, it began to disconnect right about when I needed it the most, um, and it just completely died and I couldn't get it back to life. And then one thing I also noticed about the eye bobber is that when it is in shallow water, it tends to spot fish in the same way when they're just not there. So things to be um, cautious of. So let me start with the deeper. Um, it had a ton of potential. Its screens were really nice when it worked. It worked really well. Um, it looked beautiful. It was engineered beautifully, but it really cannot lose connection that often and be useful. So um, that is one I'm sending back. It's really non-functional. I hope I had a dummy unit and they don't all work like this, but uh, that is my conclusion on the deeper. Um, Wi-Fi connection seems to be the most powerful of the bunch and it absorbs the most in terms of water waves and chop um, it still loses connection a bit more than I tend to like but I have figured out a relatively quick way to bring it back to life when it does disconnect um, which is a bonus so and the eye bobber is a tough competition because it is just so simple to use and uh, effective it seemed to work pretty well straight out of the straight out of the box straight into the water I mean that thing worked really well um, it's got a easy Bluetooth connection that stays connected it does disconnect from time to time but um, within its settings there's an easy way to reconnect it that works um, it doesn't stay offline it doesn't give the difficulty that the other two did um, and uh, I believe it works like I, sh I showed it did spot fish and I did catch a fish that it spotted so I'm kind of sold on that but if you want something complex if you want to read into weeds if you want real actual mapping of the bottom the um, graphical interface just isn't going to cut it with the eye bobber it's a very simple tool for a very simple purpose just to kind of mark fish give you your depth and temperatures and um, you know like you supplement your fishing so I really like having one of these around um, for casual fishing in particular or fishing with kids they'd be awesome because they show you things that you can't see on your own um, a little insider tip um, to have in your back pocket when it's slow day or just because it's fun to know there's fish there and know you're not wasting your time um, the eye bobber for every day just simple use if you just want to know where fish are depth and water temp it's perfect um, works well and I'd go with the fish hunter pro if you're looking for a little bit more on weeds depth um, a little bit more bottom mapping a little more intensive sonar use um, I would go with that so with that being said that was fun